again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so happy summertime. It's almost officially summer uh, here in the Western Hemisphere. Temperatures are warm. I have a vacation on the mind still. So this week's painting is inspired by a lovely campfire scene um, as if we're camping in a beautiful mountain locale. I'm gonna bring you guys through it every single step of the way, just like I do every week. The brushes that we're going to use for this painting, I have four brushes that came in a nice set here. There's four sizes, so I have my largest square wash brush, a medium-sized pointed brush, a smaller pointed brush, and then a very small detail brush. I'm gonna get those brushes in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I'm going to use for today's background step, I'm gonna start out with some black and white, a fair amount of ultramarine blue, some of my favorite phthalo green, and a little bit of a bright cadmium yellow. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, go ahead and check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I'm gonna start with my medium sized brush. This is the second largest one that I have right here. And I'm going to start with my moon or rather the sort of moon shine area here with a very, very, very light blue. So lots of white there into our blue loaded up onto that medium sized brush. And I'm going to do a circle right where I want to have my moon shape later. A little bit of water always in that paint helps things go nice and smooth. You wanna have that paint soaking into the canvas texture. Okay, lovely. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to start building the color all around that shape, going slightly darker and darker as we work our way out. And for this first center part, I'm going to still just use my medium sized brush, but I'll probably use my larger brush here in a minute once we get into a larger space, but working with just the smaller space right now, a little bit more control with that medium brush. And you want to have a slight gradation there. And I'm just going to rinse my brush and add a little bit more white here in the center because I want it nice and light. With acrylic paint, it's never too late to go back and add a little bit on top. It's all about layering when it comes to acrylics. Okay, looking good. I think I'll just keep with that brush for one more step here. A little bit more blue, still a fair amount of white. Working our way darker as we go further away from the center circle. Going around and round, a little bit of blending in between each color. Okay, I'm gonna grab my bigger brush now as I work my way even further out. In this bottom part, we're going to have our nice little hill where our quaint campsite is. So we don't really need to bring the paint down there so much. So now I have blue with just a little bit of white and I have my bigger brush now so things are going to be moving faster okay always working pretty quickly with this acrylic paint as it tends to dry quick especially in the summer in the southwest <laughs> very dry right now not quite monsoon season Okay, nice and blended all around, working our way further out. Great, and we're actually going to start adding a little bit of black as we go further out, but a nice solid blue first for that in-between one with no white, and then we can start adding a little bit of black. A little bit of black goes a long way. Very pigmented, Ooh, beautiful night sky color with our navy blue. 
we're going to push that all the way over to the side here. And probably a little bit coming around over here as well. Okay. Just like so, blending it step by step, darker and darker. Looking good. A bit more blue here with a little bit more black. Nice, solid, filled in canvas. All right. That gorgeous night sky is going to be creeping in here. Nice and blended. Just like so. A little bit coming around over here as well. Okay, looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna grab my medium brush again. And now I'm gonna grab some green. I'm going to be doing my little hillside with this stuff. So I'm gonna add some black into my green and also some white. For that base green color. It's got a little bit of a splatter there. Probably touch that up later. Now with that medium green, I'm gonna do my little hillside. I'm actually gonna go a little bit further up than that. Nice clean line here of separation where the green meets the sky. So you should see no blank canvas texture left after this step. We want to have a nice filled in first layer. You're welcome to upgrade your brush size for this bottom part if you'd like. Just kind of allowing the blue to blend in with the green a little bit. Blue and green are nearby on the color wheel, so they can blend just fine. And bring your brush strokes in the direction of that hillside, and you can kind of adjust as need be. I want to make sure that it comes up far enough because otherwise you won't have enough space to put your campfire, which is going to be the focal point of the painting. So it's important to have space for. Okay. I'm rinsing my brush. And now, real quick, back up in my sky, I'm going to take a little bit of this dark blue and do some streaks along the outside edges. This is kind of giving it another texture on top of that gradation that we did. And you're going to want to bring that navy blue a little bit into sort of that medium blue section and then some real real dark blue. coming from the very side here. So that's like night creeping in and just kind of stylizes it a little bit. It gives it almost like a starry night type feel. And then I'm going to do an opposite step with some light blue. And the same way, bringing that out to meet our dark blue. And kind of coming in between a little bit, a little bit of blending. You want this to be sort of messy and loose. Very simple step there. And then in our hillside area, I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow mixed with some green for a very pretty highlight color. I'm going to bring a little bit of white in there as well. Now I'm not over mixing my paint here so that I can get a little bit of color variation. There we go. I'm just going to bring that bright green all through my hill a little bit as well. 
then it'll blend slightly into the wet paint. All right, and now it's like a really good first layer. We're off to a great start. Let's go ahead and step away and let this layer dry, and then we'll come back and add all of our final touches. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and I also got some fresh colors on my piece of a new palette paper here. So again, I have a fair amount of black and white, a bit of my uh, favorite phthalo green. I have a warm burnt sienna type brown. And then of course my warm fire colors for my fire. So I have yellow, orange, and red. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. All right, I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush here. And we're going to start here by sort of tracing out the shape of where our fire is going to be. That's going to be kind of our focal point here. And what I'm going to do is start with a light gray. And I'm going to do first the ring of rocks that will be around my fire pit. So I'll start with my first rock, maybe about an inch or so up. And then I'm just going to do little brush strokes. We're gonna come back here in just a minute and refine things. We wanna just go in a circular pattern here, creating a bunch of little dots. Okay, about like so. Sort of on the smaller side. So as I build these rocks, I think I'll bring them out a little bit further the inner shape there is pretty solid. And what I just want to do here is the ones in front are going to be a little bit bigger and each one is going to be a sort of random shape with a sort of flatter bottom. And we're going to bring some white in there as well as a highlight color. And this is actually a pretty easy play between the dark and light colors here with the gray. So you kind of just want to play around a little bit and then you're going to end up shadowing right where that rock touches the ground with tiny little brush strokes and you're welcome to use your smaller brush if that works better for you will give you a little bit more control, just a little bit of shadow around each rock. And there at the bottom. Okay, I'm just working my way towards the back here, just starting again with gray. Just like so. And these rocks in the background are going to be a little bit smaller relative to where we would be looking. Okay. A little bit of black at the bottoms here. Very light texture or pressure rather. Sort of a rough texture. Just like so, shadow in the bottom of each rock. And then take some more white back in there as well. So you'll have gray and black and white. Just kind of tapping it in there, kind of wiggling my hand, keeping it nice and loose and random. looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and do the base color here for our logs now. We pulled a little bit of green in there. Didn't want that. Just a little bit of white though into that brown for our first color. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do three logs. So this first one will go in that direction. Did a little oval first and then two lines there coming back. I'll have one in the center, maybe that's underneath. 
And then one over here as well. Maybe that one's also underneath. Okay, and I'm going to fill this in with this color real quick. And as I do that, I'm going to add some of the shadows right on top. So I'm going to grab a little bit of black and mix it in with my brown for a really dark brown. And I'm going to go right over those same sketch lines that I just created so that I don't lose the shape. And I'm going to blend it a little bit coming over and a little bit on the inside too. We'll add a little bit of highlight in just a minute as well. Okay, so I'm just creating sort of some wooden shapes there and just bringing some shadows in to find those shapes again. Okay, I'm gonna grab my smallest little detail brush downgraded brush sizes there just to do a little bit more shadow work here. Very natural shape, kind of like our rocks. A little bit of black at the bottom where things are all sort of piled on top of each other. And then we also want to have a little bit of shadow coming out from this little wood pile as well since it would be casting a shadow there in the dirt. Okay. Just like so and then a little bit of a highlight top as well. So just some white there into the brown. I'm just going to do a couple quick little brush strokes in each shape for a little highlight as well. And that looks just fine for now. I'm going to grab my same small brush and use that opportunity to do a little bit more shadowing of some of my rocks here. Nice, thin brush. Okay. Looking pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and leave that area alone for a bit. And we're going to go back up into the sky and then we'll come back and add our little final touches in this front area. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my medium sized, uh, second to smallest brush here. And we're gonna go in with just black for our beautiful line of trees. We're going to go right along the horizon line here and starting at the top we're just going to work our way down flicking our brush out in either direction until you get to the hillside and then you can just do a little brush stroke there right along the horizon line because that would be the shadows of this tree casted onto the ground there. Okay, a little bit of water always so that everything goes nice and smooth. Okay, just working delicately, very light pressure. Solid black there at the bottom. And you can do as many trees as you feel like. I think even just a couple would look cute on one side, or you can kind of frame the moon, which is kind of what I'm gonna do. However many you end up with is gonna be just fine. Okay, looks good. I'll probably have four over here on this side little forest that backs up to our primo camp site here maybe we're doing a little bit of wilderness camping okay 
Okay, the black line right along the horizon there. I'm going to bring that black right along the horizon line off to the other side as well. And then I think I'll do a couple trees on this side also. Having them sort of tilted out makes a sort of cute, whimsical look, which is a little bit less realistic, but sort of more fun and works with the whole sort of fisheye, slight perspective that we have going on here. Okay, probably do two trees over here is how many I ended up with. And however many you end up with is just fine. Okay, just getting that all filled in first with the black. quick with that same brush. I brought a little bit of water into that and I'm going to grab a little bit of a dark green. So that's black and green together. I'm going to do a couple quick little shadow marks coming up from the hill there just to give that some perspective. sort of shadowy forest up into the foreground and we can do a little bit on the sides as well sort of leaving that center alone more looking good i like it okay and we can go back into the trees now and add our highlight color I'm going to do with white. I think I'll pull a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green in there so that I'll be working with a very light green. And we just want to do a couple brush strokes in each tree for a little highlight color. And if you go too heavy handed, you can just add some black right back on top be kind of a play between those two colors. Okay, nice little highlights. Okay, just rinsing my brush real quick so that I don't get too blended. You want to go every which way here, lots of different directions. like so. Okay, and just grabbing some black and helping me blend that a little bit. And that can help pull some color, sort of an in-between gray color into other parts of the tree. And that looks nice as well, kind of messing it up a little bit. Okay, looking good. One more color down here in our little grassy area. Well, real quick, I'm gonna grab some of my yellow. I'm gonna do a quick highlight in the grass. Similar to the wet on wet highlight color that we added earlier. Only this is going to be nice and bold. I'm just going to bring this highlight in around my campfire. Just like so. Very nice. Okay, and you can always add some more of the base color from underneath if you need to help blend those colors. 
too heavy handed anywhere. Just kind of tone that down a little bit as well with that dark green again. Okay, looking cute. Toning it down just a little bit so it's not quite so stripy, but you want a little bit of stripiness too. It's a play. Okay, look at how cute this is looking. We want to give that little log area another second to dry. Let's grab our smallest brush. And we'll go ahead and just add our beautiful moon. And the moon is going to just be done with white. And you want to try to do as circular of a shape as you can. And you're only going to go about half of the way around that circle. And of course I got a drip. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull that water up real quick with a clean brush. Quick little edit. <laughs> it always gets me with the teeny tiny brush. Okay, so my moon ended up a little bit bigger than I had initially wanted, so it went all the way, not all the way around, but maybe like two thirds of the way around. And I'll thicken it up just a little bit. My original was very slim, but this is cool too. Happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. Okay, looks good. And we actually need to have this area completely dry before we add our fire colors. So I'm gonna step away for just another minute and let that dry and we'll come back and add that final piece of delivery resistance. I'll see you guys in a few. Okay, welcome back to the final step. We have a dry little campfire area and we're ready to add our flames. Let's grab our second to smallest detail brush for this last part. <clears throat> okay. What we're going to do is start with yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of white to up the opacity there, make it less see-through. And I'm going to go from the bottom part of each little flame segment. I'm going to create sort of a few little curved brush strokes going out in each direction for the base of the flames. And then I'm going to have a few areas of it sort of wiggling its way up here. That's going to be the tallest part of the flame there. And sort of that main shape, I'm going to push that yellow down towards the bottom there and meet those first few brush strokes. Just like so, kind of wiggling my way down to meet that area and then maybe a few little extra ones here and there okay like so building our fire and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange and pull that right into the yellow we should get a little bit of a blend. Make that wet on wet. Nice, and then a little bit of red here towards the base and a little bit throughout as well. You wanna have a little bit of the yellow still visible. Just like so. I'm going to rinse my brush slightly and grab a little bit of white, making sure I'm not bringing a drip. And that's going to be the very top part of my flames here. Very cute. A little bit of highlight there. Hope things blend a little bit more too. Look at how cozy that's looking. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow now. I'm going to do a few little crackles coming from all different directions around our flame.
spleen, just like so. Coming up a little bit further. And then I'm gonna grab some white and just press that right on top of the yellow as well. So we'll get a little two-tone action going on there. All right. Very cute. Well, let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you painted along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club that's specifically designed for that purpose. Go ahead and check the description box below for a link to join. Can't wait to see what you're creating. Please hit like if you liked this painting. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, stay creative.